Hi everyone, my name is Marina and today we will talk about the internal controls. So without further ado, let's go! In the context of the organizational business processes, there are three types of internal controls. We have preventive controls, detective and corrective controls. It is important to understand though that the preventive controls are the most desirable because it's always better to prevent the problem instead of uh, recovering from its impact. Preventive controls, as you can guess from the name, target to prevent a problem. A problem can be a human mistake, a system error, an intentional damaging actions and stuff like this. Some examples of preventive controls may include, uh, for example, personal background checks, processes and procedures for the authorization of transactions, system program checks, access control software and encryption mechanisms. Now let's look at each of these in details. Performing background checks is important to ensure that companies hire appropriate personnel, especially when it comes to certain critical positions. For example, if a company looks to hire, let's say, a security administrator, it should perform a more thorough background checks. They may include criminal history, references, qualifications. Now companies also have the tendency to check social network profiles. Background checks are a part of organizational hiring practices. So other controls in this area that are also considered a preventive control may include having employees sign, for example, a confidentiality agreement or a non-disclosure agreement, have employees abide by the conflict of interest policies, uh, code of conduct uh, provisions, etc. Now let's talk about the transactions authorization. Simply speaking, companies should have in place the controls to ensure that every transaction is authorized. When we speak about the authorizations, uh, we generally mean the access level of users. It is the responsibility of the user department to define the level of access for each user and regularly review this access to make sure that it is up to date and based on the current user's job description. When we say user department, we generally mean the department managers or system owners or what I prefer, data owners. IT then uses this information from the data owners to create and maintain a user authorization tables or uh, you may say user access lists that look something like this. Such tables may have a deeper granularity level, specifying privileges at the system level, transaction level or even the field level. Now let's look at the programmed edit checks. Edit checks are programmed system controls to help ensure that the data we enter into the system are accurate and complete. Now, there are many different types of the edit checks, such as the sequence check, limit check, range check, validity check, etc. There will be a whole other video devoted only to the edit checks. But for simplicity, let's take this example from our day-to-day -day life. Let's say you sign up to some website which requires you to input, some, uh, to input your email. If you enter an email without an add sign, the website will tell you that your input is invalid and will not accept it. This is a, just a simple example of the edit check. Uh, encryption. Wow, this is such a fascinating topic. But in this video, I will only touch it very lightly. Let's just say that encryption mechanisms are put in place to ensure data confidentiality, integrity and authenticity. Um, there is a lot of things to talk about in the area of encryption and uh, honestly I cannot w wait to make more videos about this. Since we're talking about uh, the encryption as a kind of a preventive control, let's just say that it prevents unauthorized access to data. For example, when you're sending an email, essentially you are sending data over the internet which is uh, inherently an unprotected network. So in this case, it is important to use encryption 
to avoid unauthorized access to your data by a third party. Detective controls help to detect when the problem occurs and report on it. Some examples of detective controls may include hash totals, checkpoints in production jobs, echo controls in telecommunications, error messages over tape labels, duplicate checking, variance reporting. I feel like I said a bunch of uh, random words, so let's try to look at each of these individually. Hash totals relate to batch control and balancing, which will be covered in the future videos as is a broad area and very, very interesting. Hash totals relate to the batch control and balancing, which will be covered in more details in the future videos. For now, let's just say that hash totals provide assurance that the data are accurate and complete. It is a type of control that tests if the total in a batch of records is in line with the total calculated by the system, by the computer. So, in order to understand what it means, let's just take a look at a simple example. Let's say we have a database with employee timesheet records. It looks something like this. So we have an employee ID, employee name, and hours worked by every employee. Now, if we need to insert three more records into this system, these three records will look something like this. So we have employee number one, number two, and number three. In this example, we may use hash totals to ensure that these records are input accurately into the system. For the hash totals, we should choose uh, a certain numerical attribute. In this case, let's choose the hours worked. We calculate manually the sum of hours worked for each of these records, so 26 plus 44 plus 16. Then we compare this manually calculated sum to the one calculated by the system after we upload these three records to the computer. Whoops! Looks like I didn't record the next part, <laughs> but okay, I will just do it again. So, production checkpoints. These are a type of a detective and partially corrective control that helps to minimize the risk of data loss during the data processing. If, for example, you are uploading some data into the database, checkpoints will back up the data at certain intervals and in case uh, the upload fails or some error occurs, it can restart the process from the latest saved point instead of starting from the scratch. Next one, we have a duplicate checking. Duplicate checking is a type of control that ensures that the data entered are not already in the system to avoid duplications. So this one is quite straightforward. I will just move on to the next one. Also because it's 3 a.m. here. <laughs> the review of the activity logs is a detective control that helps to identify the errors, omissions, abnormalities, or some malicious acts. Majority of systems have this functionality to capture the activity logs. This may be the logs of actions taken by the users or logs of the system processing activities. This is also quite self-explanatory, so I will just move on. But please, uh, guys, if you have any questions, maybe I'm going too fast or too slow, or if you have any comments, uh, just uh, feel free to write in the comments below. I will really appreciate your feedback. Corrective controls. They help to minimize the impact from an occurred problem, which may be a system error, human mistake, malicious act, etc. So some examples include business continuity planning, disaster recovery planning, contingency planning, incident response procedures, backup procedures, or service level agreements. Let's look at some of this in more details. The processes of business continuity planning, or BCP, and disaster recovery planning, or DRP, are a set of activities that we will learn about in the future videos in more details. But basically what they do, they help companies to manage the risk in the event of disaster or disruption of services. For example, if there is a power outage in a company's office building due to some reason, 
then the BCP and DRP are activated to minimize the impact of such disruption on critical business activities and help to manage the risks while company is recovering from this event. Backup procedures. I'm going to say this one is also clear, though it is such an interesting topic that I will absolutely cover it in the future videos in more details, including the types of backup, the advantages, disadvantages of each type, the tools that you can use for the backup. But for now, let's move on. Service level agreement or SLA is a kind of agreement between a service provider and a client that specifies in detail the service performance standards. There are different kinds of SLAs, however, here we have mentioned it as a corrective control as we refer to the break-fix SLAs that specify the procedures for fixing the system in case of failure. Okay, here I prepared for you just a small quiz. I will give you a description of the control and uh, you can guess the type of the control. Okay, so let's go. The first one, maintenance of access logs of system resources usage. So pause the video and give it a go. Detective. Next one, user authentication and authorization. Pause the video and try. I hope you guessed correctly, it's a preventive control. Next one, we have database integrity constraints. So pause the video and give it a go. Okay, it's a preventive control. And the last one, hardware error reports. So pause the video, I'll wait here. I hope you did well, it's a corrective control. I was trying so hard not to make this video too long, so I skipped the explanations for the answers. But if you have any questions, again, please write in the comments. I will answer to every one of you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. And if you did, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and you comment and you give me a like or whatever. And I will see you in the next videos.